morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 30 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure, because the human biological system is a healing system, a regenerating system. It is designed to divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health and nutrition or prescription drugs, we are here for you at 844-236-6010. 844-236-6010 is our number. We seem to have some... Uh, some phone line issues here this morning, so keep trying if you get a busy signal, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products or anything we're talking about today, bone broth protein or skin health products, or you have a success story to, to share with us, if you want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side today and every day. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the program or recommended on the program, please call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. Excuse me, 866-735-2470. You can also head over to my blog, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com and order products right off the website or sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off the website as well. If you want to make some money selling longevity products or make a little bit of money, make a lot of money, if you want to help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program, We'd love to have you on the Brightside Ben team. Head over to brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. You can sign up right off the website or call, <clears throat> excuse me, the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. If you want to check out our Truth Skin Health products, Truth Retinol Gel, 5% retinol gel, made without wax, emulsifier, surfactant, water, Silicon, oil, preservative, fragrance, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of my truth formulations because you shouldn't have to pay for anything just for me to fill up the jar, fill up the bottle. That's how most skincare products are, folks. 90%, 80 to 90% or more of the skin health product that you're using that you spent $50 an ounce on or $100 an ounce on or even 3 or $4 an ounce on, up to 95% of that product is water, wax, filler, stuff that your skin doesn't need or doesn't want. You're not going to find any of that in our Truth Skin Health products. Head over to truthtreatments.com. Check out our Truth Balm, Truth Serum, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, as well as our Truth Retinol 5% Gel. Okay, excuse me. i got something in my throat here <coughs> this morning. All right, we're talking ketogenesis, the ketogenic diet. We've been talking that, about the ketogenic diet for a few months, and we will continue talking about it because it's really, it's not the ketogenic diet. It's the good health diet. It's the anti-aging diet. It's the anti-cancer diet. If you're going to, if we're going to discuss strategies for getting healthy, there is no more important strategy than to make sure you're leveraging the power of fat in the presence of low carbs. It's not a weight loss diet only, although it's wonderful for weight loss, and that seems to be what everybody is focusing on with the ketogenic diet. By the way, I have a video out on the ketogenic diet with some of the, some of the highlights about it, and that's, uh, uh, well, let's see, send me an email, ben at kseo.com, and I'll send, you, I'll send you a link to the video. And also, I'll be doing, if you're coming to convention, the longevity convention next week, September 8th, 
September 8th, 9th, and 10th. I believe those are the dates, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So that would be the 8th, 9th, 10th, and 11th. I'll be doing a talk on the ketogenic diet there. Hope to see you. I, I'm, I've been studying this stuff. Well, I've been studying the ketogenic diet for many years, but really hardcore for the last year or so. And I am just blown away by how powerful this stuff is, how powerful this protocol is, this way of eating is. The ketogenic diet is the diet of health. By, its vir by virtue of its ability to, to, uh, to turn on fat burning, to make us fat burners rather than sugar burners, you can think of it as the pre preeminent anti-aging diet. It takes work for the body to uh, uh, produce ketones and to burn fat. Sugar burning is much faster. So in a way, the body would rather burn sugar in a way because it's so much easier. The problem is sugar leaves behind crusties. And sugar requires an entire hormonal profile. It, it initiates a hormonal cascade, specifically an, an insulin cascade that can result in high blood pressure and cardiovascular disease and weight gain and, and cancer and accelerated aging. Pretty much all of the yucky things that can happen to us are related on some level to insulin and sugar. How important is that? Let me say that again. I want everybody to really hear this. Pretty much everything that, uh, that we hate about health and about our, about our poor health and about how our bodies can fall apart, and that includes plain old aging, is linked to sugar and insulin. That means anything you can do to reduce the uh, amount of sugar that your body has to process and to lower your insulin is going to be in your long-term health health interests, and therein lies one of the most important factors when it comes to how, how beneficial the ketogenic diet can be. Our bodies are lazy. Our bodies are economical. They're not going to expend energy if they don't need to. And when there's lots of glucose present, when there's lots of sugar present, we're not going to be burning fat. And what do you think we've done over the last 10,000 years of, of modifying our food supply? What has been the singular goal of modifying our food supply over the last 10,000 years? What has been the singular goal of modifying our food supply, especially in the last 200 years? It's increasing sugar content. So we are subsisting on food, on a type of sugar-rich food today that didn't exist as our bodies were evolving 100,000, 200,000, a million years ago. This high sugar intake this high proportion of our calories that's coming from sugar is the key element in the triangle of disease. It is the connecting point between our digestive problems and our adrenal and thyroid problems. And from there, every health challenge you can name, autoimmunity, cancer, diabetes, uh, uh, just the general degradation of the body that's associated with aging ensues. If you want to do one thing, if you want to do just one thing to slow down the aging process, to feel better, it would be to reduce your intake of sugar and help support the body's ability to be a fat burner. Therein lies the unbelievable and, uh, health benefits of the ketogenic diet. There's so many benefits to it, the high fat, low carb, and that's the key, folks. It's not just high fat. It is high fat in, the, uh, in combination with low carb. High fat in combination with low carb. There's so many benefits, it's hard to list them all. And I can't list them all, but just review, review our archive page, brain health benefits, liver health benefits, athletic performance, anti-cancer benefits, weight loss benefits. Babies are in ketosis as they're growing. They derive much of their calories and energy from ketones. Breast milk contains ketogenic compounds, that is, substances that will help you make ketones, MCTs, medium chain triglycerides, MCTs, which, oh, by the way, are rich in coconut oil. I know about all the stuff about oil, but in my humble opinion, coconut oil is an amazing, amazing nutri nutritional food. I don't even want to say supplement. It's more like a food. The fact, that, the fact that babies are fat burners, the fact that babies are in ketogenesis, the fact that babies produce ketones is a demonstration. That's all you need to know, really. The fact that babies are... Or, or high ketone producers is all you need to know when it comes to the importance of the ketogenic diet for growth and for, de uh, uh, for development. And this is why fake breast milk is a problem. Fake breast milk may contain lots of nutrients that they think are associated with, uh, with the health benefits of, of nursing, but they're missing stuff. Breast, uh, breast milk doesn't contain absolutely everything you need, although I will say they are smart enough to put MCTs and coconut oil in breast milk, but they put a lot of other crappy stuff in there. 
Here's another. Well, I'll tell you when you come back from our break. I'll tell you about another great way, easy way to help the body support ketones. Probably some of you are doing this already. We'll talk about this when we come back from our break. Continue talking ketogenesis and talk about some supplements you want to use when you're going ketogenic on the bright side. Okay, we are back on the bright side. I am pharmacist Ben. I want to encourage you to check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com. If you're dealing with dark spots or acne blemishes or you want to slow down the, uh, the aging process of your skin, there is nothing more powerful for the skin than retinol, vitamin A. There's a reason why retinoic acid is a prescription drug. Retinoic acid is truly, uh, vitamin A, I should say, all vitamin A uh, all powerful vitamin A forms, not retinol, not the over-the-counter vitamin A that you get typically at the drugstore, which is called retinol palmitate, but the, the powerful active forms of vitamin A, retinol and retinoic acid, nothing beats those for, for anti-aging as well as for acne and just for smoothing and softening your skin. If you want to check out our Retinol 5% Gel, Truth Retinol 5% Gel, head over to truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. And, of course, if you're interested in joining the Longevity, Longevity team, love to have you on the Bright Side Ben team. Call our phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470, and they can tell you all about it. For a one-time $25 fee, you can start yourself a Longevity business make some money selling longevity products and help spread the word about how powerful and important a good nutritional supplement can, a supplement program can be. Okay, so we're talking the ketogenic diet. I said before our break, uh, babies are in ketosis. You know, all of us are in ketosis when we're not eating, basically, at least when we're, uh, when our body needs calories and there's no calories coming in. So one of the best ways to leverage the power of the ketogenic diet is to not eat after, say, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. If you go from 4 o'clock in the afternoon to breakfast, or even better, if you go from 4 o'clock in the afternoon to, say, 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock in the afternoon, uh, you've gone pretty much a full maybe 20, 18 hours or so without calories coming in your body's going to be burning some fat. It may not be full-blown ketosis. Full-blown ketosis does take a little bit of time to, uh, to, for your body to adjust to. It takes maybe two or three weeks to go into full-blown ketosis when you practice caloric restriction and, and, and high fat. But you will still go into a little ketone generation. You will still produce these powerful energy compounds just by not eating. If you fast for one or two days, you're going to be generating ketones, and this accounts for some of the benefits, some of the mental health benefits that are associated with the ketogenic diet, and I haven't even touched on that. Well, we talked a little bit about brain health benefits in the ketogenic diet, but what we really haven't talked about is the fact that you feel good when you produce ketones. Ketones are feel-good substances. They're not, just, they're not just brain health substances. They don't just help with brain fog and with seizure disorders, and if you're dealing with movement issues, they do. They help for that. If you got Alzheimer's or Parkinson's or brain fog, you definitely want to be at least at least reading up on the ketogenic diet, if not becoming a full-blown ketogenic diet fan and aficionado and connoisseur and participant, you at least want to read up on it. If you know somebody who, or you're a caretaker for somebody who has Parkinson's disease, you should really be reading up on the ketogenic diet. Uh, Alzheimer's disease, keto, uh, uh, Parkinson's, movement disorders, um, Alzheimer's, dementias, uh, I should say vascular dementias, anything that has to do with brain health, but also just to feel good. One of the things about the ketogenic diet is the ketones are feel-good substances, but another interesting aspect of the, of the feel-good nature of the ketogenic diet is you get off that high blood sugar, low blood sugar roller coaster that makes us antsy, gives us anxiety, makes us moody and grumpy. When you're low blood sugar, and when your kid is low blood sugar, by the way, we get grumpy and irritable. When you're burning fats, you get this steady stream of energy. You don't have that high blood sugar, low blood sugar roller coaster, aside from the fact that you avoid the insulin issues and you avoid the high blood sugar issues. Now you get off that roller coaster which, by the way, begins woefully early. The high blood sugar roller coaster for many of us begins when we're not even a year old. If you find that you have to give your kid apple juice to keep him quiet or pear juice to, to calm him down, 
If you find that your kid is grumpy if they're not eating, um, if, if they're not constantly eating something, especially constantly eating sugar, candy bars, and nutritional bars, and, and baby food, and fruit juice, chances are pretty good your baby has begun the high blood sugar, low blood sugar roller coaster, has, has, has gotten on the high blood sugar, low blood sugar roller coaster, which for many of us continues the rest of our lives. Getting off that high blood sugar, low blood sugar roller coaster is one of the most important things you could do to stay healthy. One of the most, no, I would say it's the most powerful anti-aging strategy along with, along with the digestion. And keep in mind, and this is the only place I've heard this, this is the only place you're going to hear this, and I don't hear anybody talking about this, very, very, very important link, this very important connection between digestive health and blood sugar health. Now, if you understand the triangle of disease, which is uh, unique to the bright side, nobody's talking about the triangle of disease, but if you really understand the triangle of disease, if you've been listening to this program now for five years or coming to my presentations for 10 or 15 or 20 years, and you really understand the triangle of disease, you are, are, are unique, you are singular, because you understand the link, the connection between the digestive system and the blood sugar system. When we talk about blood sugar for the most part as a culture, even people who are hip to the importance and the relevance of healthy blood sugar, when we hear about healthy blood sugar, when we talk about healthy blood sugar, we talk about keeping your calories down. Okay, that makes sense. We talk about keeping your sugar intake down. Okay, that makes sense. If you're really, really savvy, you may hear or talk about protein and, and fat. Okay, that makes sense. And of course, chromium and vanadium and the B complex, they're all important for keeping your blood sugar stable. So we talk about these things all the time and you hear about them all the time with other radio shows, the internet, doctors leaving, well, not so much doctors, but, but healthcare, uh, alternative healthcare practitioners, some doctors as well. You know, people are getting hip to the importance of, of lifestyle maneuvers, lifestyle strategies to help lower your blood sugar, to help protect against hyper insulin anemia, too much insulin in the blood to help stabilize insulin. So we know about that, but what you don't hear is the fact that the microbiome, the gut bacteria play a major role in the development of diabetes. They play a major role in sugar metabolism. They play a major role in how the body processes nutrients. They play a major role in the production of B vitamins, which are important for sugar metabolism. That means if you're taking antibiotics, your risks for diabetes go up, to put it simply. That means if your kid is on antibiotics, his risks for diabetes go up, to put it simply. That means if we're eating antibiotic-rich food, that is dairy and, and, and fish and meat and uh, pretty much everything, because we put, them in, we put these antibiotics in the food supply, just in the tap water. What that connection between, the, uh, the exact connection between antibiotics and, and uh, dysglycemia, messed up blood sugar, is I can't say, but I can tell you from a biochemistry point of view, it's pretty clear. If you play around with your microbiome, if you don't support the health of the microbiome, if you do things that kill off that microbiome, your risks for messed up blood sugar go up. You want more? Okay, here's more. When we don't digest our food properly, when we don't process our sugars properly, our risks for diabetes go up. When we have food toxicity and food allergens entering into the bloodstream or just getting into the digestive tract, our risks for dysglycemia go up. Nobody's talking about this. Type 1 diabetes has a major digestive component. Type 2 diabetes has a major digestive component. This is what the triangle of disease is all about, the connection between the digestive system and the adrenal thyroid complex, and from there all diseases, occurs at the level of blood sugar. So if you want to work on your blood sugar, sure, use your sweeties, use your B vitamins, reduce your intake of sugar, get on the ketogenic diet, but also support digestive health. All right, we are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. I wish I could give you our number and we could, we could uh, have a little conversation here. I love talking to you guys. Uh, unfortunately, our phones are down. So uh, I guess keep trying if you want to get on at 844-236-6010, but it doesn't look like we're going to have our phones up for this program. Apologize for that. For those of you uh, looking for the ultimate in skin health, and that's what I like to think my Truth Skin Health products are. If you're looking for the ultimate, if you're looking for products that don't have any fillers or waxes or waters or emulsifiers or surfactants or preservatives or fragrances, especially preservatives, by the way, those are nasty chemicals. 
nasty with a capital N. You know what a preservative is? It's a euphemism. It's a euphemism for poison, literally, not figuratively. Preservatives work by killing things. What do they kill? They kill cells. Yes, cells. The, old, uh, the, the, the fundamental unit of livingness is a cell. Oh yeah, they kill bacterial cells, that's true, and fungal cells, that's true. But you know what? When it comes to killing, there isn't much of a difference between your cells and a fungal cell, or your cell and a bacterial cell. That is a preservative that kills a bacterial cell is also going to ultimately kill your cells. Is that a good idea to put on your skin? I don't think so. That's why when I had to make, uh, when I was making skincare products for Blistex, and they do use preservatives in, in Blistex, I would wear a mask and I would take, I would wear double gloves, stick the scoop in the preservative with a mask on and, and fill up a, a bag with it. And then every time I dug out of that little bag to put in, to put, uh, to put preservative in a particular product I was formulating, I'd wear a mask again. And that's the same stuff you guys are rubbing on your skin every day. Not all of you, but some of you. Some, uh, a lot of us are. That's why our Truth Skin Health products, which are health products, don't have preservatives in them. And that's why they don't have perfume in them. That's why they don't have fragrance in them. That's why they don't have emulsifiers and surfactants and anything that could possibly do any damage to your skin. That is offensive and insulting and rude. And it's 95% or more of our skin health products that are out there. More, maybe 99%. That's why I came up with Truth Skin Health products because that's what I was using. When I wanted to put something on my skin, I would just go right to the ingredient deck and put the stuff on my skin, maybe put, a, put it in a little transdermal matrix if I wanted it to penetrate, and that's all I would use. I wouldn't put any preservative in there. And that's why I came up with, the Truth Skin Health, uh, with my Truth Skin Health formulations, because you should have the same benefit. And if you don't believe me, ask anybody who's already used the products or anybody who has been using uh, uh, my personal formulations, my friends and family. Anyway, Truth Skin Health. Uh, truth skin, truthtreatments.com for Truth Skin Health products. Truthtreatments.com, retinol 5% gel, Truth Serum, Truth Balm, and Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream. Okay. All right, so we're talking ketogenic diet. We're talking ketosis. Skip meals, you go into ketosis. Stop eating at 4 o'clock in the afternoon and don't start eating till 11 o'clock the next day. Skip breakfast. And, oh, yes, breakfast is the most important meal to skip. You're gonna, you'll be hearing, I predict, you're going to be hearing more and more about this in the coming weeks and months and years. Breakfast is a scam. You don't need to break your fast when you wake up in the morning. Not true. If you need something to get going absolutely positively, you're really, really, really hungry. If you don't want to access your fat stores because that's what's going to happen if you go hungry for a little bit, but if you don't want to, have a little chicken soup. Have a little bone broth protein. Have a hard-boiled egg, but certainly not a pancake and egg breakfast. And certainly not those dessert breakfasts. Oh, my God. Who came up with those dessert breakfasts? Oh, yeah. Edward Bernays and marketers. Do you guys know the story of Edward Bernays and the, and the all-American breakfast? Edward Bernays, known as the father of public relations, Sigmund Freud's nephew. He, uh, he took his Uncle Sigmund's wisdom about how the mind works, about unconscious drives, and he applied it to marketing. He started public relations, the father of public relations, Edward Bernays. And he came up with the brilliant idea. This was Edward Bernays' brilliant insight, which we still use today. He got so-called opinion shapers, that is doctors and celebrities, people whose opinion we respected. This was the 1920s and 1930s, and the press was just starting to get going. We were just starting to have the concept of celebrity. There probably were celebrities before, but not in the same kind of mass-marketed way because the, the pa newspapers were starting to get going and, and uh, radio was starting and advertising was starting. So this whole th the whole uh, combination of media and, and, and advertising and celebrities all came together in Edward Bernays' work, and he got the idea to get doctors and celebrities to promote things. He was the one who started this idea of doctors say that you should smoke camels, and doctors say that you should eat Cheerios, and doctors say you should have more bacon, and doctors say you should have, um, you, you should have a, a, a four-course breakfast, that you need a big breakfast. And to this day, we believe that. It's not true. It's not true, folks. You don't need a big breakfast, and you don't need a breakfast, period. 
have some BTT. And if you absolutely positively need to get something in your belly, have a little yogurt or chicken soup or, or something high protein, a little piece of fish. That's all you need. Protein can go a lot. You know, we've been talking about fat, but protein is also, uh, that plays a major role in energy production too. Your body can turn protein very effectively into energy. Very effectively. Too effectively. This is the problem with people who go paleo and think they can eat lots of protein. But you can leverage, you can exploit the power of the body to turn protein into sugar uh, by having a little piece of fish every, in the morning. That should, that's a good breakfast. If you absolutely have to have breakfast, have a little small piece of fish. If you're diabetic, it could be very helpful to stabilize your blood sugar because you, can, you don't get the blood sugar spike that you do with, uh, with glucose, but you still get a little bit of sugar. If you're hypoglycemic, eating protein can help stabilize blood sugar. And if you're going more protein, you want to make sure that you're exercising. Protein and exercise go together. If you want to take advantage of the power of protein, and, and I'm not, trust me, I am not underestimating the power of protein. Even though we've been talking high fat and, and beating up a little bit on the paleo diet, I, I felt like I was beating up a little on the paleo diet. It's still a good diet. It's just that if you're going high protein, you got to start working out. You got to exercise. From Massey University, exercise has been shown to improve the health of people with type 2 diabetes. And there's a quote here. But the benefits of exercise vary greatly with, uh, between people, unquote. Well, what is it? It's protein. If you're exercising, you need more protein. If you're exercising and you have diabetes and you really want to stabilize your blood sugar, you want to combine the exercise with protein. Exercise and protein should go together because if the protein is just sitting there, the body's going to turn it into sugar and then into fat. So if you're going high protein and going paleo, you want to make sure you're exercising. And you know what? Probably a good idea to do a little exercise no matter what, especially if you have blood sugar problems, according to this uh, article from Massey University. New insights into how the mind influences the body. This is from the proceedings of the National Academy of Science. Neuroscientists at the University of Pittsburgh have identified nerve networks that connect your brain to your adrenal glands. Interesting. You know, we talk a lot about nutrition on this program. We talk a lot about exercise. We talk a lot about diet. We talk a lot about the physiologic elements, but not a lot, or in my opinion, not enough about the mind-body connection. If we are truly interested in anti-aging, living a long life, fighting cancer, and being healthy and vital, and having energy, we've got to understand the link between the mind and the body. We'll talk about that a little bit when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We will be back right after this. Okay, we're back on The Bright Side. I am Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining us. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive pages at brightsideben.com and benfuchsarchives.com. Thank you to Peter in the UK for setting that up. And you can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team. Love to have you on my team. I can help you build your business. We can do this thing together. We can do three-way phone calls if you have problem clients or patients or friends or family members. I love helping people. That's my, that's my mission in life. I found my purpose in life. And that's to make a difference in your health, to make a difference in everybody's health. As a pharmacist, I am privy to information that even the, uh, the ultimate examples of healthcare professionals, that is physicians and medical doctors have. Pharmacists study nutrition as medicine. We don't study nutrition as like a dietitian studies it. We don't study nutrition like a nutritionist studies nutrition. We study the medicinal and therapeutic value of nutrients. That's kind of, a lot of folks don't realize that. That's something we study in pharmacy school. We study vitamin A as if it was immune boost, an immune booster. We study vitamin A for night blindness. We study B vitamins in terms of skin diseases. We study vitamin C in terms of connective tissue diseases and also vitamin C as a treatment for connective tissue diseases. Yes, pharmacists study vitamin C as a treatment for connective tissue disease. Why is that important? Because aging is a connective tissue disease. Osteoporosis is a connective tissue disease. Weak blood vessels are a connective tissue disease. Wrinkles is a connective tissue manifestation, if not a disease. 
the stooped over, hunched over characteristic uh, look of elderly folks, of older folks, is connective tissue shriveling up. And vitamin C is a treatment for connective tissue disease, period. That's what scurvy is. Scurvy is vitamin C deficiency. And uh, uh, scurvy is a connective tissue disease. But there's lots of connective tissue diseases. Just because they have a different name doesn't mean, just because we call it ankylosing spondylitis, doesn't mean it's not biochemically scurvy. We got all these different names and all these different syndromes for connective tissue diseases. There's like 80 or 90 of them, but they're all the connective tissue falling apart. And guess what? Vitamin C, if you ask a pharmacist what vitamin C is, they'll tell you it's, it's a remedy for connective tissue diseases. I don't even want to say remedy because that sounds too much like a doctoring. Vitamin C is the key to reversing connective tissue diseases. It's not, a, it's not a cure for connective tissue diseases. It's how it's reversed. Doctors hate when you say cure. The government hates when you say cure. You're not allowed to say cure because cure is in the magical realm. When we talk about nutrition, we're not talking about curing. We're talking about reversing. When it comes to connective tissue issues, you could say, oh, I have Ehlers-Danlos. I, uh, I had a lady um, at a talk I did a couple weeks ago. She said, what do you know about Ehlers-Danlos syndrome? Ehlers-Danlos syndrome is a connective tissue disease. Marfan syndrome, connective tissue disease. Osteogenesis imperfecta, connective tissue disease. Scoliosis, connective tissue disease. They're all the connective tissue breaking down. How they're breaking down doesn't matter. How the connective tissue breaks down is irrelevant. It doesn't matter. Your diagnosis doesn't matter. Your diagnosis doesn't matter. I, if I had to say one in your face, way, uh, concise way of describing what this program is about, it's your diagnosis doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what they call it. Your connective tissue is breaking down. In pharmacy school, one of the first things we learn when it comes to nutrition is that vitamin C is the key element in connective tissue uh, synthesis in the production of connective tissue. So what does that mean? You can't make connective tissue without vitamin C. Oh, let me think now. How many of us do you suppose are getting enough vitamin C? Well, we're getting enough vitamin C maybe not to get full-blown scurvy where our body just turns into a puddle. But how do we know we're not subclinically scurbotic? That is, how do we know we don't have subclinical scurvy? Scurvy that's not as bad as our turning hemorrhaging to death. But how do we know that our osteoporosis is not a sign of vitamin C deficiency? It could easily be a sign of vitamin C deficiency. It could easily be that our blood sugar problems are a sign of niacin deficiency. It could easily be that our skin problems are niacin deficiency. It could easily be that our problems handling blood sugar or cardiovascular issues are thiamine deficiency. Why? Because these things, these nutrients, which are deficient in the American diet and the standard American diet, are intimately linked to healthy heart, healthy blood sugar, healthy skin, specifically in the sense that when you pull them out of the diet, Bingo, you get heart disease. Bingo, you get co connective tissue disease. Again, I'm not saying that these things are cures. I'm saying they're necessary. That's different. See the difference? Cure is magic. Necessary is science. Necessary is logic. Cure is in the realm of some kind of uh, mysterious miracle that occurs. Necessary is scientific fact. Thus the importance, and the, thus the importance of, uh, of having your pharmacist tell you about these things, because that's what we study. Anyway, before we went to break, I was talking about how uh, this, this article from the Proceedings of the National Academy of Science, research from the University of Pis Pittsburgh linking the mind to the body. Now, yes, I, I'm a, I love biochemistry and nutrition, obviously. That's what this program is about. But please don't underestimate the powerful nature, the powerful nature of the mind when it comes to our bodies. Read Quantum Healing by Deepak Chopra. Great book, classic book, about the link to mind and body. Mind is connected to body so much so that they're not even distinct. The mind is the body. The body is the mind. The mind is a manifestation of the body. We suffer from this making a distinction that doesn't exist. The ancient Greeks started this. I believe it was the ancient Greeks, but it was a long time ago anyway. They started, they were the first, somewhere in history, a distinction was made between psyche and soma. The Greeks were the first people to make it big, but it probably happened before that. A distinction between mind and body. They are intimately connected. As we think in our hearts, so are we. That's what it says in the Bible. 
as we think, as a man thinketh. Do not underestimate the powerful nature of the mind. The mind needs to be regarded as a kingdom. And, and, and invading thoughts need to be regarded as an enemy entering the kingdom. This kingdom needs to be protected from invading thoughts. And that's how you want to look at it. As invading thoughts enter into the mind, biochemical changes occur that turn us old, that, that make us age, that make us sick, that mess up our heart. From the American Journal of Cardiology, August 15th issue. Review links anxiety disorders to the risk of cardiovascular events. That's what this is about. So yeah, vitamins are important. Micronutrients are important. Minerals are important. Diet is important. Exercise is important. But so is the mental nature as well as the emotional nature. And I consider them to be two sides of the same coin. The mental nature and the emotional nature. Whenever I do my talks, the first thing I say before I talk about all the incredible things you could do with nutrition and with, with diet and with exercise, etc., the first thing I always say is SMEP, S-M-E-P. Health is multidimensional, disease is multidimensional, spiritual, mental, emotional, physical, in that order. That means, and I've been doing this 32 years and I've seen thousands of sick people, uh, tens of thousands of sick people in 32 years. And there is always a spiritual crisis lurking behind physical, the physical manifestations of disease, always. And by spiritual, I don't mean anything magical or woo-woo or, or unscientific. By spiritual, I mean a sense of disconnection from our environment, a sense of fear, a sense of disconnection first, which turns into a sense of fear. Because when we're not connected, we go into fear. When we feel disconnected, then all of a sudden there's this mystery out there and the only fear is the fear of the unknown. And the sense of separation leads to a fear of the unknown. And this is the primal sin, the original sin, if you will. Sin, by the way, means without separation. It starts as soon as we're born, we see the world outside of us, and that's when it begins. And then it tumbles out of control as our child, uh, our, our, for most of us, or for many of us at least, if not most of us, our dysfunctional childhoods ensue. The sense of outside world being against the inside world, of us against them, of us against the environment. This is where disease begins. Dis-ease, out of ease. We feel out of ease. It progresses into a mental, uh, into mental dysfunction, crappy thinking, leads to a crappy body. Crappy feelings lead to a crappy body via the activity of hormones. And hormones are what link the mental nature and the physical nature to, uh, and the emotional nature to the physical nature. Hormones are the bridge. The hormones. If anybody ever asked you what hormones are, if you didn't know what hormones are, now I'm telling you. Hormones are the link between the outside world and the inside world, and from there, our bodies show up for better or for worse, which means we got a lot of control over this process, folks. All right. That was a bunch of digressions, but I think it was necessary for a health show. It's not fair for anybody to do a health show and promote good health and wellness and not focus, in my opinion, it's not fair, and not focus on this spiritual, mental, and emotional natures, as well as, of course, the physical nature of good health and wellness. Thanks for listening, friends. Check out my, my, uh, our skin health products at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. And if you want to join the Longevity team, call 866-735-2470 or sign up right from the websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. We'll talk to you all later. Have a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Bye for now.